In these tutorials, you learned about Video Reach Campaigns, or VRC, and Video View Campaigns, or VVC. These are multi-format, AI-powered, and optimized awareness and brand consideration campaigns. But you might be wondering, for example, what was the deduplicated reach across VRC and VVC? How many people of a certain age and gender did my campaigns reach in a given period? How efficient is that reach compared to traditional, linear TV? Cross-media reach in Google Ads answers these questions by providing post-campaign reach and frequency reporting deduplicated across campaigns. These insights are enhanced with licensed third-party traditional TV data that powers reach and frequency comparisons. Also, these insights are actionable when informing upcoming video campaigns in the planning phase. To get started, go to the Measurement tab in your Google Ads account and click Cross Media Reach to create a report. Since reach is conventionally tied to a country's census population, first determine the country in which your video campaign impressions are delivered. Our reach models support more than 80 countries, with TV data licenses enriching more than 10 of them in Google Ads. Reach is typically reported on a national level, broken down by country. This means you'll see results expressed as a percentage of the total population in a specific country based on census data. However, we also support reporting for smaller geographies within a country, such as states, regions, or metro areas. Now we will set up a report at the national level. So after selecting the Digital Video plus Traditional TV report, click National and then Add a Group of Digital Campaigns. Use filters to narrow down and select a group of video campaigns from your account. We recommend using Bid Strategy as a filter to narrow down to target CPM or CPV, indicating campaign types most frequently associated with reach and frequency KPIs. Other campaign types, such as maximized conversions, are also measurable in cross-media reach, although reach and frequency are likely not the key performance indicators. Campaign date ranges or naming conventions are also helpful to find relevant campaigns. For example, VRC, Video Reach Campaigns, as multi-format, AI-powered, reach-optimized awareness campaigns. Depending on your campaign naming conventions, you may also exclude any campaigns that served as test campaigns. Here, for example, we're selecting any campaign that does not contain cell in its name, as those were used for experimental groups only. Cross-media reach reports show deduplicated cross-campaign reach and frequency. Until now, you've seen campaign-level insights, but for the first time, you can see it combined across video reach and view campaigns. Lastly, you can add TV campaigns comparable to your digital video campaigns. Depending on the country, the availability, granularity, and hierarchy of third-party TV data varies. Generally speaking, there are two types of TV data. First, with multi-select TV data, for example, you can search for the Google Pixel 8 Pro and Pixel 7 Pro as the advertised brands and products under Alphabet as the advertising company and select any arbitrary combination. Second, with single-select TV data, you can still find the same advertised brands and products when searching top-down for the advertising company Alphabet, browsing through all brands and products and arriving at Google Pixel 8 Pro. However, with single-select TV data, you can only choose a single one, that is Google Pixel 8 Pro or Google Pixel 7 Pro, but not both. Depending on the country-specific data, you can select more granular campaigns, such as the Pixel 8 Pro Circle to Search campaign listed here. On a final and important note about TV data licensed and used in Google Ads, we want to call out that it is owned and operated by third-party partners licensed and integrated by Google, but not formally tied to any Google Ads video campaigns, defined by our partners in its data granularity, hierarchy, and taxonomy. For those reasons, we recommend that Google Ads users apply their best judgment to select traditional TV campaigns that correspond to the digital brand video campaigns in Google Ads. Conclude the report setup and create the report. On the report page, top-line settings help refine the insights shown. Most importantly, date ranges need to be adjusted so that digital and TV campaigns overlap as much as possible. 
Also, it's important to specify the demographic so that the reach and frequency insights and takeaways are effective, as date range and demographic are very relevant subtext in reading reach and frequency metrics. For example, 55.4 million unique individuals were reached across digital and traditional TV in those four weeks of April, equating to a 46.2% roughly monthly reach of the 18 through 44 census population and an overall average monthly frequency of 3.2 as a measure of ad exposure. Since ad exposure varies, effective frequency is another setting that can be used to refine reach. For example, changing it to 3 plus applies a frequency threshold so that unique individuals are now reported only if reached at least three times in those four weeks. Because those reached once or twice are not counted when an effective frequency is applied, the reported total reach is now 25.9 million unique individuals aged 18 to 44, or 21.6% of the census population. However, because one plus reach is most commonly reported, to count every individual reached at least once, we're switching the effective frequency back to highlight additional cross-media reach insights. For example, Cost per on-target reach is another key metric that helps us understand how efficient the reach is. It's one of two reach efficiency metrics next to cost per on-target point. Since licensed third-party TV data is used to estimate TV spend, that estimated cost per point might look different from the actual cost of your TV campaign. For that reason, TV spend adjustment is another top-line setting that helps refine reporting insights and allows you to overwrite the TV spend to accurately reflect the actual TV cost of your campaign. On the other hand, the digital spend is directly taken from your Google Ads account and does not require any adjustments. In summary, here's an example of how we can measure a campaign considering the relevant demographic of male and female adults between 18 and 44 and reporting on the basis of four-week rough monthly reach. We can better understand comparisons of average frequency and reach efficiency on the basis of cost per on-target reach and toggle to cost per point. Additionally, the estimated reach across the selected digital video campaigns from Google Ads and corresponding traditional TV campaigns is shown as the total number of people reached across media channels and as a percentage of the total population. Lastly, the spend allocation across digital and TV can be understood with the respective contribution to cross-media reach in mind, which is broken out into total reach from digital, total reach from traditional TV, overlap reach from both digital and TV, and the incremental digital reach. Additional comparisons and insights, for example, on the basis of impressions or frequency segments are also available. All of these post-campaign measurement insights are especially useful when planning for and optimizing upcoming campaigns, for example, with Reach Planner in Google Ads under Tools and Planning. The same third-party linear TV data is included there to forecast the deduplicated reach across VRC and VVC and across YouTube and TV with comparisons that can help find the optimal budget allocation. Learn more in this series of tutorial videos. If you have any questions or for more information, visit the Google Ads Help Center. Your Google representative may also assist you with access questions.